Now, the next subject that we'll talk about relative to the tortoise shell has to do with UV absorption. Do their shells absorb UV? There's another thing that I hear a lot. Uh, there's a lot of argument about how much UV radiation is absorbed by the tortoise's shell. If I were to paint over a shell, would I be stopping him from, as one person said, absorbing vitamins? Technically, they don't absorb vitamins from the sun. They absorb UV radiation and heat. That UV and heat uh, penetrates the skin, and goes into the layer of fat under the skin, and it pulls out lipids. It converts those lipids into pre vitamin D. And then through many other processes involving livers, other enzymes get involved, eventually that's how vitamin D is made. But the starting point is fat, lipids in the skin layers, and UV radiation. There is no fat layer between the bone and the shell. There is no fat layer. So there's no lipid layer beneath this part of the shell. That is completely in the arms and the necks of the tortoises. Also, when you think about some of the purposes of, of keratin in humans and most other animals that have keratin hair, it acts as a sunblock. It's a UV blocker. It insulates our big old brains, but it also keeps the sun away. It keeps us from literally burning our brains. Now let's take this outside and experiment. Now, my personal guess is understanding what I understand about UV light, knowing what I know about keratin in biology, I'm going to guess very little, if any, UV passes through this. When you think about it, the screen on top of a snake cage filters out almost 50% of the UV of your strip light. And you can see through that. That's a very permeable thing. Keratin, you know, it's, it's made to prevent UV. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if no UV passed through this. Okay, I might be surprised if no UV passed through this. I think some might pass through it. But I would say very little, if any, is going to go through this. So come on, let's head outside. It's uh, over 100 degrees out. It's June in Arizona. And the sun is shining down like always. So let's go experiment. As you can see, it's a little bit after three o'clock. It's 102 degrees out and it's the end of June. If we use a solar meter to take a look to see what our UV index is right now, we can see that angling at the sun, it's just above six. You know, clearly, clearly desert-like conditions. If we hold this here and we take the scoot of a desert tortoise and we pass put that right on top of the meter, you will see that zero UV passes between the sensor, which is now showing 6.7, and the shell, the keratin. And what's really interesting is you can even see that this is semi-permeable from a visual standpoint, but ultraviolet waves do not penetrate tortoise shell. And there you have it. Absolutely no, zero UV passes through this scoop. You know, I can take my finger and uh, you can kind of see my finger through here. Yeah. So some visible light can pass through this, but no UV light passes through this. And so we can extrapolate from that, no fat layer, no UV absorption, the shell does nothing for vitamin D synthesis. We have just determined that there is zero UV penetration into the shell. Well then, where does it occur on a tortoise or a turtles? Well, there are places that aren't keratin dense. When your tortoise sticks his head out and lays his neck down, he's absorbing the UV through the neck skin. When you see a painted turtle or a rated slider up on a log with their feet wide out, you know, their back paddles are as wide as can be, their hands are sticking out. In those areas of the skin that don't have hardened keratin scales, that's just, it's just skin. And it's, it's actually pretty elastic. That is where UV is absorbed into the body of a turtle or a tortoise. Now, I couldn't do a video on tortoise shells without talking a tiny bit 
about pyramiding. When you look at a tortoise shell that has been pyramided, this one is not. You can see these little areas and lines where the scoots used to be. That kind of, these areas they kind of dig into the shell. Then you can see the lines where the actual ribs live, where all the, all the actual growth is occurring at this boundary here, this matrix. This is where new bone is being added and it's growing at the edges. But when a shell pyramids, that's not where the pyramiding happens. You can see that despite the location of the ribs, the pyramiding occurs where the scutes are. Why is that? Well, what do we say about keratin? Keratin's hard. And it's harder than the bone of a young tortoise. Naturally, a tortoise is born, or a baby box turtle is born, and they go and they seek shelter. They dig into the ground, they find a rotting log, they find a bush, they find a tree root system, and they dig themselves into there. And their whole body is surrounded by a proper temperature that they find most comfortable, but it's also surrounded by moisture. What does moisture do to keratin? Remember, we talked about this. When you get out of the shower, you can feel how it's a little bit softer. It softens the edges of the keratin. It softens that newly laid down keratin so that the softer bone underneath isn't being scrunched in by the keratin. As early as 2003, I believe, there was a lab study that proved that humidity was a more factorial cause than excess protein. People throughout the 90s came up with the idea that too much protein makes the shell grow too fast and that's what causes pyramiding. There really wasn't much thought put into that because, well, if the shell grows fast, then it's going to outgrow the keratin that's growing fast and it should kind of like even itself out. But moisture, it seems, is the bigger component. A good recipe for smooth tortoise shell growth throughout its entire life, from the time it's a baby, until the time it outlives you and your grandchildren are taking care of it. You wanna feed them a nutritious diet. They need the vitamins and minerals, calcium especially, for strong bone growth. This tortoise did not get that, but that's another video. You got the strong bone growth. Now you need to not impede that bone growth. So you wanna make sure the keratin layer has the proper outside humidity to keep it soft enough to not impinge the bone growth not push down on the edges there the way this tortoise has. Through all of this, internal hydration is very important. Make sure your tortoises have access to water. They need access to environments that will give them the proper humidity that they see fit. You know, they're gonna to wanna to dig down into the dirt to the moist layer, but they also need actual water to drink. To wrap this video up, don't paint tortoise shells. There is no benefit to the tortoise when you paint its shell. If it's a really thick layer of of paint at the edges here, it can impede the growth. Any paint is going to mess up its ability to thermal regulate. And if you paint it too much, you get paint in its eyes and its mouth, you could poison the poor thing. But not through its shell, as you guys learned today. If you're doing field research and the only thing in your budget is paint, I would recommend an acrylic paint because it won't absorb into the shell the way an oil paint would. Put numbers inside the scoots, try not to cross the boundaries of the scoots. This will obviously not hurt the tortoise or turtle. Now, for those of you who have watched this video and are learning all this stuff about anatomy for the first time, uh, if it doesn't fit with what you feel, I'm sorry, but this is biology. I know people feel their living, feel their shells breathe, but that's not how nature works. I just showed you how nature really works. I'm sure for many of you, this was your first time really looking at and being taught about the anatomy of tortoise and turtle shells. If this doesn't fit with what you were told before and what you believe because of that, I recommend check your sources. There's nothing that I talked about today that can't be found in a good book or in peer-reviewed research papers, which are available at your local library, or if you're a college student or high school student, you can go into your online library and and see that there's plenty of evidence to support everything that I told you and showed you today. So I'd like to thank you for sticking around and 
I'd like to thank you for watching this video and for everybody that's a subscriber. I really appreciate you guys hanging out. I know I haven't uploaded very many videos in a while and I can't promise to do a better job, but I'll try. If you like this video, go ahead and click the little thumbs up, give this video a like. If you enjoyed this, you'll probably enjoy some of my other videos. Go ahead and watch those. And if you're not already, please subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.